Welcome to another episode of our Cornerstone Lesson Review and this week we are looking at Lesson 8 for February 23, 2019 and our lesson title is God Provides. Our scripture story is taken from Genesis 21 verses 1 to 5 and Genesis 22 verses 1 to 12. Our commentary this week is taken from the Patriarchs and Prophets or the book Beginning of the End chapter 13. Our key text is taken from Genesis 22 verse 12. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Now for the flashlight section. At the appointed place they built the altar and laid the wood upon it. Then, with trembling voice, Abraham unfolded to his son the divine message. It was with terror and amazement that Isaac learned his faith, but he offered no resistance. He could have escaped his doom had he chosen to do so. The grief-stricken old man, exhausted with the struggle of those terrible days, could not have opposed the will of the vigorous youth. But Isaac had been trained from childhood to ready, trusting obedience, and as the purpose of God was opened before him, he yielded a willing submission. Taken from Patriarchs and Prophets, page 152. What do you think? Each of the following people made several huge sacrifices to achieve world change and obey their conscience. List one sacrifice each had to make. Abraham Lincoln, Esther, Josiah, Ellen White. Did you know? The name Isaac means he will laugh. It is the name given to him by his father Abraham. Laughter was a theme in the birth of Isaac. You may remember that when God told Abraham that Sarah would have a son, he fell face down with laughter. See Genesis 17 verse 16 and 17. When Sarah found out about the promise, she too burst out laughing. Isn't it great to see in the Bible character's personality? However, God didn't find their laughter at his words funny. Into the story. Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age. At the very time God had promised him, Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore to him. When his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him as God commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son, your only son whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. 
The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abram answered, God himself will provide a lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told them about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. And this was taken from Genesis 21 verses 1 to 5 and Genesis 22 verses 1 to 12. Out of the story, who are the main characters in this story? Who are the minor actors in this story, the people who are in the background of the story? What parts of the story are key to understanding it? Underline them. What aspects of the story are new to you? Place an arrow beside them. What words in this story help you understand how Ishmael and Hagar might have felt? Draw a rectangle around them. What one thing is God saying to you through this story? What words or phrases most capture the various emotions of this story? Circle them. What situation in your life do you feel compares to Abraham's challenge? Being 100 years old and having a new baby to rear. Now for the punchlines. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trials because, having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. James 1 verse 12 Let us not weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Galatians 6 verse 9 Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Matthew 26 verse 39 Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Proverbs 3 verses 5 and 6 The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Proverbs 9 verse 10 Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you do what was done to the fig tree, but you can say to this mountain, Go yourself into the sea and it will be done. Matthew 21, verse 21. Further insight. Those who thus become participants in the labor of love are brought nearest to their creator. Ellen White, Steps to Christ, page 80. If the love of God is in the heart, it will be manifested in the life. Again taken from Ellen White's Steps to Christ, page 85. Now for the Connecting to Life section of our lesson. Sabbath. Read James 1 verse 12. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. In the What Do You Think section of this week's lesson, you are asked to list some sacrifices made by great men and women of history. 
The Merriam-Webster's online dictionary has three definitions for the word sacrifice. The third definition is striking. Destruction or surrender of something for the sake of something else. When one makes a sacrifice, it is done because one values something else more than the thing they had to sacrifice. In your own words, explain what Abraham valued more than the life of his young son Isaac. Sunday, read Genesis 22 verse 3. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the bird offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. Read the story of Abraham and Isaac again in the Bible passage for this week. Pay attention to Genesis 22 verse 3. What person has taught you the most about what it means to sacrifice? What have you learned from them? The phrase early the next morning in this verse should make you pause. It hints at the very important part of what it means to be obedient to God. When God asks us to do something, even when it is difficult, we must never hesitate to comply. To do so is to disobey. Give three reasons Abraham could have used to avoid obeying God. Monday. Read John 11 verses 17 to 37. And this section looks at how Jesus comforts the sisters of Lazarus. Verse 17. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask for. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whosoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. After she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house, comforting her, noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved, in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how much he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? If you read the key text for this week's lesson, you had to say, wow, that was a close one. In the nick of time, God spoke from heaven and stopped Abraham, providing a ram for the sacrifice. Does God always come right on time? To answer this question, read the story found in John 11 verse 17 to 37. 
Am I willing to trust God even when he seemingly fails to show up in time to meet my need? Tuesday, read John 6 verses 5 and 6. Verse 5, when Jesus looked up and saw the great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he had already in mind what he was going to do. Read the flashlight quotation. Which of the following would best describe what you might have said to your father? Are you crazy? There's no way I'm letting you kill me. Give me a few minutes, Dad. I'll go and find a ram. If this is what God wants, then I'll do it. God will test us from time to time. Read John 6 verses 5 and 6. What test did God give his disciples? How did they do? Did God give up on them? Wednesday. Read Matthew 26 verse 39 from the punchline section of the lesson. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Jesus was so pained by the sacrifice that lay before him that blood came through his pores, quite a rare medical condition. Jesus persevered out of his love for us. Read the other punchlines for this week and answer the following. What is the promise to those who persevere in trials? If you use your faith, you would be able to move. We are to trust God with how much of our hearts? Thursday, read Mark 8 verse 34. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, Whosoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Obedience to God requires faith, and faith is demonstrated through obedience. God has made several requests of his people. One of them is found in Mark 8 verse 34. Followers of God must be willing to do something. What is it? Try this today. Identify one bad habit that you'd like to change. Wasting time, watching too much TV, swearing, getting too angry, talking back to your parents, procrastination, etc. Write that bad habit down on a piece of paper along with what you want God to do with it. Then pray asking God for strength to sacrifice this habit for his glory. Find a safe place to burn this prayer request. Start overcoming your bad habit today by doing one thing to change it. For instance, if anger is your challenge, begin the change by asking a cool-headed adult how they stay calm. Friday, read Proverbs 3 verses 5 and 6. Verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. What does Abraham's relationship with Isaac teach you about the kind of relationship God wants to have with you? What are you willing to do to develop a closer walk with God? If you want a closer relationship with God, ask Him for it right now. Well, that brings us to the end of this week's lesson. But before we go, remember the reading from Patriarchs and Prophets or the book Beginning of the End, chapter 13. 
We look forward as usual to your participation and a lively discussion in class on Sabbath. God bless. See you in the next episode.